Let's talk about the EV West M3. But first, who is Michael at EV West? I'm Michael Breen with EV West, and seven years ago we started our little electric car speed shop so we could help people make classic cars go faster. So around 2010 we started seeing the, the Tesla Roadster hype, you know, and they were putting out some specifications. And if you look at it just based on specifications, you're like, this power plant, we should be able to put this in other cars. And at the time I was doing some amateur racing with some friends and uh, we just kind of started a project just uh, uh, as kind of like a technical exercise to see uh, if we could actually build our own, you know, kind of homebrew electric race car. At the time we were looking around for venues and there wasn't a lot available to electric cars and we came across Pikes Peak and they actually had a class. And uh, we ended up building the car purpose-built for Pikes Peak. Uh, we ran the race in 2012. We ended up setting a record for the fastest uh, street legal electric car to go up the hill. Now the car that Michael is talking about is the famous M3. 342 horsepower and 850.4 pound-feet of torque. A few years later, I saw it run at Laguna Seca and my friend Caswell did this piece on it. Michael Bream drove the EV West Electric M3 to a first in the EV conversion class and set the second fastest time of the day behind a Tesla Roadster. The M3 even managed to take a win over favorites in the prototype class and the ever-threatening Tesla Model S. This is the same E36 M3 that EV West built for the race up Pikes Peak in 2012. With 342 horsepower and 850 foot-pounds of torque at just 600 RPMs, it was near perfect for the hill climb, but was equally suited for the race at Laguna. The driveline cost roughly $40,000 and is based around twin warp 11-inch DC motors and an 80-cell CALB 180-amp-hour lithium-iron phosphate prismatic cell battery pack, which is good for a total capacity of 47 kilowatt-hours. The car weighs roughly 3,800 pounds and uses a two-speed power glide to put energy to the wheels. And I was fortunate enough to take it out for a test drive back when they first built it. The car is ridiculously fast yet super easy to drive. EV West built a near perfect electric conversion for competition. But that was a few years ago and by now that car, believe it or not, has what is now considered old technology with its DC motors and lithium iron phosphate batteries. We need new tech in there. Let's talk to Michael to see what he's done. It was, it was kind of in a class of its own in a weird way. And uh, just recently now with just the rapid acceleration of, of everything. Of technology, uh, yeah. You know, it, it was time, right? And then last year uh, for the street legal class at Pikes Peak, uh, there was a gentleman who gutted, um, completely gutted a Tesla. But yeah, just the bare minimum. Still, still met the requirements uh, that we did for street legal and all that stuff, factory car. And he beat us, I think, by like four or five seconds. Not by much, but he beat us. <laughs> yeah. And so now the story is, well, okay, now we have to do something, <laughs> right? Yes. And so the, the really the impetus for round two started at Pikes Peak last year when our record got broken because it did something to me. You know, all of a sudden we have a reason to go back. Now we have another. The bar's been raised and it went past us, and you know yeah. we're competitive, so we want to get it back, right? Yeah. And now with this new technology, I mean, now there's. Uh... AC motors available to us and the lightweight batteries the lightweight cooling. batteries yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah so yeah. so so how are you cooling the motor are you running are you running glycol just through like the cooling system through the whole thing uh-huh yeah and we're uh we're running it down the tunnel you know where the drive shaft used to be and then we have a big radiator up front so we have a <laughs> uh, yeah we have like a nine inch radiator behind the kidney drills <laughs> the car uh it's so difficult to accelerate up to like 60 miles an hour without accidentally spinning the tires. Oh, I see, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's just, you know, like... It's a lot of power. You, right. It's, it's so... Uh, twitchy's not really the word, right? But it just wants to lurch. Like, it just, you know, so all you really do is you just kind of 
give it a blip with your right foot at almost any speed under 60 miles an hour. <laughs> you and it can... will spin the tires. Uh, yeah, without all that traction control, uh, just raw power. So you're doing it again. It's an immense amount of raw power that car has. Uh, right. The cool thing but now on is race that race day we'll turn it down. You know, because you gotta, you can't race with that much. <laughs> So, uh, this is the first look that we have at Bream's new car. So here's essentially what he did. He removed the twin Warp 11 motors from the front that weighed, uh, you know, quite a bit, right? Uh, he removed the drive line and then he removed the differential and all that stuff, it's gone. Also, he removed a thousand pounds of lithium iron phosphate cells, right? And then what he did is he replaced all of that gear. M3 that used to be DC power. Now we have a Model S motor. A single Model S motor that sits in between both of the axles. He changed the stock Model S differential to a limited slip one. And then he built a custom made frame to install it between the rear wheel. So that simplified the entire driveline system. All now it all lives between the two rear wheels. Next what he did it was install this kind of cells. These are lithium cobalt oxide cells. They're LG Chem pouch cells that, that have an energy density equal to that of the Model S cells, right? So the energy density is really, really high, but the power density is about twice that of the Model S batteries, which means that you can have a battery pack about half the size of what's in the Model S, but yet still get the same full power output as a full size battery in the Model S. And so this is now the new and improved M3 from EV West. <laughs> Uh, it's so quiet. What'd you guys do to it? Okay, so we gotta go to the other side. The other side. So they're about to shoot. Uh, I think they're gonna do a burnout. They're gonna do a burnout here. Yeah. How you been, man? Good, man. Yeah. Staying busy. Keeping busy. Yeah, I haven't even had time to come down here. I was gonna say these like <laughs> this big production things. You're more more your cup of tea. I like it. <laughs> I'm going to stand there and I'll stand here and be like, wow. <laughs> It'll be smoke. It's not, this is not my best work. Don't show this. Oh, <laughs> it's, this is going to be the, the, the featured thing, man. All these burnouts were yours. Doing this last night. That's no guarantee that I'm not going to crash, no, no, right? No. Yeah, I would never guarantee that because that would uh, automatically guarantee yeah, that exactly. I'm going to crash. Yeah. All right. But, we're good. You know, we're not going to do some crazy okay. long one. I'm just going to go to like maybe the orange green. Okay. Like All right, Keith. Yeah. Thank you. By the way, if you're interested in converting your own car, these battery packs that are used in Zem3 are now available for sale at the link above. So people can expect to see the M3 in the coming refuel races and possibly the next Pikes Peak. Is that what? Is that yes. What? Yes and yes. Wow! It's time that people get to know the test. The, the well, what is, what's it called now? The uh, uh, the the P3. The P3. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs>
It's, it, yeah. it's a P85 and an M3, man. It's a P3. It's a P3. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, there we yeah. go. You got to rebrand and uh, yeah, and then start doing some promotion for it.